you'll remember the winch. Uh, I must say, we took it up the forest, we tried it, we used it, and it works brilliantly. It's very powerful. It basically pulled anything we asked it to. Um, we were going to video this, video it working, and um, show you exactly just how powerful the thing is. Unfortunately, after about 10 minutes, the cable sprang off the drum, wrapped itself around the spindle, and so we had to stop. But that's fine, that's a video for another day. The problem we ran into was to do with this gearing. <clears throat> this is from the previous video. The um, In order to get the amount of torque that we need from the actual winch drum, there's a lot of reduction gearing going on here. And in order to free spool the winch drum, what we had to do was loosen off that final sprocket, the sprocket which drives the drum. The uh, problem with that it's very fiddly um, it means you're having to constantly stop loosen that nut um, pull the cable walk back 50 meters put the sprocket back on retighten it check it. it it works but it's a bit fiddly and when you're you're using it a lot you don't want to be doing this all of the time so what I decided to do was change the gearing on this will allow me to just disengage the clutch pull the cable out by hand and not have to disconnect any sprockets at all. Now at this point what I'm going to do is actually show you a spreadsheet so that I put together explaining what actually goes on with this winch at the moment. The input or the drive shaft has 12 teeth and it runs to a 14 toothed sprocket attached to which is a 10 tooth sprocket which connects to one with 21 teeth attached to which is another 10 tooth sprocket which connects to a one with 26 teeth attached to which is another 10 tooth sprocket which attaches to the final drive which has 29 teeth now at each stage we're getting a reduction in order to work out the total reduction you simply multiply these and this gives us a total reduction of well, 0 0.05, which basically says that for every 1,000 RPM we were getting from the engine, we're now getting 5% of that figure at the final drive. You can see I've worked this out here for you. 2,000 RPM, I'm getting basically 54 output RPM. If I change that to 2,000, you can see that doubles. That's what we've got at the moment and this is very this this setup here gives us an awful lot of torque very powerful but when you're trying to free spool the cable um, it's just simply too too difficult to make this whole thing work in reverse you have to put a lot of energy in here to actually get back to the original RPM. So let's look at this this is what would happen if I removed that first gear that first gear linkage and I went straight to the second one so the second one now becomes the first the first gear so we're going from 12 teeth to 21 and then from 10 to 26 and then from 10 to 29 this gives me a reduction of 0 0.08 or basically 8% of the RPM that we're getting from the input drive will make its way through to the drum to the winch drum. Okay, that's still quite tough to pull on, still a bit complicated. So if I remove the next two gears and I go straight from 12 to 26 and then 10 to 29, you can see we've got a reduction here of 0.16. Now that is three times greater than the original reduction. So I'm going to have three times the RPM but I'm also going to get less torque. Don't think that's going to be a problem because this thing was very powerful originally. Um, torque was not an issue with it. And you can see that if I was to remove one gear and follow this path, then my new output revs would be 75. And if I was to follow this route, then my new revs, my new output revs would be 159. 
so this drum will be going three times faster than it was originally. So this is what it looks like now. So I've gone over the final route. I've removed the first linkage. I've removed the second linkage. And it follows that I've removed the connection to the third sprocket. And I'll direct connection from this sprocket to the dry sprocket. This is what it looks like now. This is uh, much easier to pull the cable out by hand. All I need to do is disengage the clutch, and I don't need to disconnect that final sprocket. If I wanted to put these gears back, it would be a pretty straightforward job to do that. I ever wanted to change this I've got different options I could put different gearing back in here but again it's going to make it uh, I could restore some gearing here but again that's going to make it uh, more difficult just uh, to pull the cable out by hand I could for instance change that to a 10 tooth sprocket and you'll see that that reduces it somewhat I could increase this and you see we're coming down. Interestingly, if I wanted to get back down to something like the original, I'd have to basically double the size of that sprocket. And there isn't the space there for that. So it's it's a compromise. Um, giving up torque and uh, I've got higher RPM than I'd probably want and less torque. The RPM is an issue, the less torque isn't because this thing was very powerful to begin with. I get a chance before the winter. I'll see if I can show you this thing in action. Thanks for your time.